Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Internet Computer Developer Journey. In today's episode, we're going to get started on the first module in Level 1 Space Cadet. So if you recall, the first level was known as Level 0 Pre-Flight Operations, and all of the modules in that tutorial level were kind of just setting us up for our developer journey and giving us the fundamental groundwork that would be the equivalent to pre-flight operations before taking off into space. So now that we're entering level one, this is known as the Space Cadet level, and this is meant to reflect kind of the introduction level of a development process. So in level one, we're going to start out today with 1.1 exploring a live demo. And so in this tutorial today, we're going to take an overview of the Motoko Playground, which is a live sandbox environment that we can use to deploy canisters without having to set up a cycles wallet or a couple other prerequisites that are required for deploying on the IC mainnet. And then throughout the remainder of this level, we're also going to get an introduction to Motoko and lay the groundwork for the fundamentals of writing Motoko code. And then we're going to dive right into developing our very first DAP, where we're going to develop a simple poll application that can be used to propose a question and then have different users vote on that question and see the results of that poll. And that's going to include both a front end and a back end canister. Then once we've deployed our first DAP locally, before we deploy it to the main net for real, we're going to need to acquire cycles and also learn how to use cycles. So that's what we'll cover in module 1.4. And then 1.5 will be dedicated to going through the deployment process of deploying an app on the main net. And then module 1.6 is going to be dedicated to learning how to manage and maintain a canister. So in today's episode, we're going to take an overview of the Matoko Playground. We're going to look at using the DFX deploy to playground command, which is using the flag playground with the DFX deploy command. We're going to take a look at what we can do with that canister once it's been deployed to the playground. And we're also going to talk about some of the restrictions that come with the playground since it is a sandbox environment. So for today's episode, we're going to be following this tutorial document, which is 1.1, exploring a live demo. And this tutorial does work off of the Hello World project that we created in the last module, 0.6, Introduction to DFX. So if you haven't watched that episode already, you will need to follow along with that episode in order to have the prerequisites that we'll be building off of in the remainder of this episode. So like I mentioned, we will be using the Motoko Playground in today's episode. So the Motoko Playground is a development environment that's used to deploy canisters without having to manage cycles or, like I mentioned, other prerequisites that are required before you deploy something to the mainnet. So the Playground gives you an easy way to just deploy something directly to the mainnet to simulate different workflows and just kind of get a feel for what mainnet deployment feels like and looks like without having to jump through all of the necessary hoops just yet. It's a great way for developers to get accustomed to what deploying on the, on the IC looks like, gives them a way to just kind of kick the wheels and see what's ahead of them in their developer journey process. So that's why we're going to be starting out using the Matoko Playground today. So while it is called the Matoko Playground, it is not specific to Matoko. Um, you can deploy any canister written in any language to the Matoko Playground. So the name is slightly misleading um, at first glance, but we will be using Matoko code since this version of the developer journey focuses on Matoko development. So since the playground is designed for small scale testing, it does come with several different restrictions. Some of these restrictions for the playground include the inability to use HTTPS out calls or other functions that require attached cycles because cycle transfer instructions are silently ignored by the playground. So you can't transfer cycles to or from your canister, meaning you can't use functions that require attached cycles. Another restriction is that WASM files can't be gzipped and all WASM files that are uploaded to the playground are scanned for any potentially expensive or malicious operations. And by expensive, um, that refers to the cost of cycles. 
Canisters can at most use only one gigabyte of memory on the playground and they can only be deployed for a maximum of 20 minutes. So once a canister is deployed on the playground, it will be uninstalled after 20 minutes automatically so that all of the resources that canister is using are returned to the canister pool for other people to utilize on the playground. And again, all of those restrictions are solely since it is designed as a small scale sandbox testing environment. So to get started using the Matoko Playground, there is a front end interface that is running on the Matoko Playground canister that you can use to click around and develop in browser and then deploy directly from the browser to the playground and then interact with your canister through the browser. However, for this tutorial, we will solely be using the CLI since we're going to be focusing on using the DFX deploy to playground command, which is specified by using DFX deploy and then using the flag playground. So like I mentioned, we're going to be working directly from the previous project that we created in the 0.6 introduction to DFX module. So if you followed along with that tutorial, the directory for that project should be located at the developer journey directory and then the subdirectory hello world. And so we're going to open that in the CLI by typing in the CLI window CD for change directory and then clicking and dragging that hello world file to get that full file path. And then we're going to be in that hello world subdirectory. So in the 0.6 introduction to DFX module, we went through all of the files and subdirectories that are in this project by default. The only thing we didn't do was deploy our project. So in this tutorial, we are going to deploy those canisters, which um, if you recall, are primarily the backend canister for so if you recall, we went through the files and subdirectories that are located in this project we called Hello World. This Hello World project was created using the default template that DFX uses whenever it creates a new project. By default, that template uses a simple Hello World program that just deploys a simple Hello World function in the backend canister. And since it's our very first project, we didn't change any of the files or file names or project configurations that came with that template and we called the project hello world so if you followed along in 0.6 introduction to dfx you'll remember that we created a brand new project with dfx and we kept all of the template files and folders as they were originally generated by dfx if you remember, we talked about how DFX will always use the same template when creating a new project, and that template is always a default Hello World project. So since we called it Hello World, um, we are just describing what that template is, but we could have called the project any name that we wanted, and it would always use that default Hello World template um, that DFX uses. So since we already looked at all of the files and their contents in the previous module, we won't be revisiting that. But if you need a refresher, please go back to the previous episode 0.6 and review those files and the project configuration. So we will be using that deploy to playground command that is DFX deploy and then using the playground flag. This is a feature that is only available in DFX versions 0.15.1 and higher. So we want to make sure that we're using a version of DFX that supports this. So we're going to run the command DFX and then pass the flag version. And we'll see that I was using a older version because I was doing some SNS stuff. Okay, so we want to DFX upgrade actually. Failed to get permission denied. Well, that's rude. Okay. And so now I need to 
clear that back. Okay. So to check to make sure that we're using a version of the effects that supports the DFX deploy to playground feature, we're going to check using the DFX command and then passing the flag version. And that will return the current version of the effects that's being used. And we can see that my terminal is using the DFX version 0.15.1. And so that's exactly the version, that's exactly the minimum version that we need to be using in order to use this feature. So then we're also going to want to make sure that we are in that directory. And so like we did in this change directory command. Um, we should be in that directory, but we can double check by using the pwd command to make sure we are in that developer journey and then the hello world subdirectory. And then to triple check everything, we can do an ls or a list and make sure that we are in a subdirectory that has a dfx.json file um, indicating that we are working in a dfx project directory. So next we're going to make sure that we have a version of the local replica running. So we're going to run the dfx start command and we're going to pass the flags clean and background to this command. These are important because the clean command is going to make sure we don't have any leftover cache files from another project running that may interfere with our current project. And then the background flag is going to send the output of this command to the background so that we don't need to open another terminal window. We can continue working in the terminal window that we have open. If we wanted to see this output for logging or debugging purposes, we could exclude this background flag and all of the DFX logging output would be returned to the terminal window. Um, we would just need to open another terminal window to continue working in our project. Since we are just going to be deploying this to the playground and we aren't looking to do any serious debugging in this tutorial, we are going to use that background flag. So now that we have a local replica running and we've confirmed that the effects is the correct version to be using the deploy to playground feature, we're going to use the command dfx deploy. Then we're going to use the name of the canister that we want to deploy. If we want to deploy all of the canisters in this project, we could omit this portion of the command where we specify um, a canister name to deploy. But for the sake of learning DFX and learning DFX's syntax and capabilities, we're going to specify just the hello world backend canister. And then we're going to use that playground flag to deploy it to the playground. And so we will see a warning about the default identity. That's because up until this point, we haven't created an identity other than the default with the effects. And so this warning for now can be ignored. And then we will see the output of the command as deploying the hello world backend canister and some output regarding the canister's memory and other resources being reserved in the playground. And it has can this canister ID and then the canister's code is installed and then deployed. And we can also see that the canister, since it is a backend canister, can be interfaced using the candid interface. And that URL for the candid interface is going to be this highlighted in green in the terminal. So then we can open that in a web browser and we can see that we are viewing the candid UI for the methods that are defined in this backend canister. Since this backend canister is just defining a simple greet method, since it provides a simple hello world function, um, that's the only method we see here in the candid UI. We'll come back to the, the candid UI toward the end of this tutorial. But for now, we're going to explore what else we can be doing with the canister now that it's been deployed to the Motoko Playground. So we can interact with it directly from the CLI. And since the canister has been deployed to the playground, we can see that this URL 
is going to use the same URL format that canisters deployed to the mainnet use. If this canister was deployed locally, this URL would look a little bit different since it would be running on our local replica. But since this canister is running on the Matoko Playground, it's going to use this URL format. So since we have that canister's ID, we could call commands directly to that canister ID, or we can continue to use the canister's name. So now that our canister is running on the playground, we can start making some calls to that greet function that is defined in the canister. So first we're going to call that greet function and we're going to pass the, the text to everyone to that function. So to make that command, we're going to use the dfx canister command. Then since the canister is running on the playground, we need to use the flag network followed by the word playground to indicate that we're making a call to the version of this canister that's running on the Matoko playground. Then we're going to use the subcommand call to indicate we're making a call to the canister. And then we need to specify the canister's name. We could also use the canister's ID but since the canister's name is locally defined in our dfx.json file in this directory, we can use the canister's name. And then we're going to call the name of the method or function that we're calling from the canister. In this instance, that is the greet function. And then we're going to include the text that we want to pass to that method. And we're going to have to use the format of using a single quote followed by a parenthesis, followed by a double quote, and then whatever text we want to include, and then close all of those quotes and parentheses. And so this command will return hello, followed by the text that we passed and end it with an exclamation point. So in this instance, that is hello, comma, and then the word everyone that we passed, and then that exclamation point. So we can use that command and pass any text that we want. So instead, if we want to use the text developers, we could go ahead and pass the text developers in that single quote parenthesis double quote portion of the command. And then we'll see that instead of returning hello everyone, it returns hello developers. And then we can also provide the same output by interacting with the canister via the candid UI. So we can go into the candid UI that we opened before and we can type in the text everyone and then select the query button. And we can see that it returns hello everyone just like it did in the CLI. And then we can also change this to developers, query that and then have it return hello developers. So we can see how making a call via DFX in the command line or making the call via the candid UI will produce the same result. So that'll wrap things up for this episode of the Internet Computer Developer Journey. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the Definity YouTube channel to be notified of the next episode of the Developer Journey when it's released. The next episode is 1.2, Matoko Level 1. So in that module, we will be going through the fundamentals of writing Matoko code and some of the basic syntax that we need to get familiar with moving forward and developing more complex Matoko code in the future. If you liked today's episode, be sure to leave us a comment. In the description of this video, there will be resource links to the tutorial on the developer documentation that we followed along with today. There will also be links to our developer Discord community, our developer Twitter, and our developer forum if you want to ask questions or connect with other developers on their developer journeys. Thanks everyone for watching. We'll see you next time. Take care.